All right. <laughs> Welcome to another video of Zoe talks about whatever she wants to. I have my snack right here of taquitos. So we're just gonna eat and talk. Um, this is the, the extremely long awaited video of why my eight year relationship failed. Anyway, let's just get into it. Let's call this guy Paul. So Paul and I met between 8th and 9th grade in um, health class. I just thought that he was a quiet kid who kind of just hung out in the back of the classroom. No big deal, whatever. Hi, editing me here. I just wanted to mention that um, I didn't really explain this, but I went to high school in California and then went to university at UBC and I now live full time in British Columbia. Um, so just in case that didn't make any sense because I didn't explain that. Um, we end up being in the same physical education class, but yeah, I just thought it would be like the funniest thing ever to just draw out a little bit of this, this kid's personality because of how quiet he was. Um, and then on a dare, he ended up asking me out and I ended up saying yes under the pretense of like, it's high school, whatever. This isn't gonna be forever. It's really important to keep in mind that at the years that we first started dating, it was such a formative age range in terms of like wanting to be accepted and wanting to be a part of something bigger than just yourself. And so I think a lot of us cling to our friends and our friend group who are feeling the same way and they are experiencing the same types of pressures um, and we kind of become each other's safe space even if we aren't necessarily the most compatible people. Um, so I think that happens a lot in high school and this this Paul that I was speaking to and I was seeing it was absolutely no different. It was very sweet at the beginning like we didn't talk we barely talked we just stand next to each other while we talked to our friend group um i think after like maybe three months he held my hand and i think after like seven months he kissed me on the cheek or something like that like it was all very sweet very wholesome at the beginning our personalities were super different and i always kind of liked that i always liked that it was like opposites attract very like, I was the sun, he was the moon type thing. Um, so many of my memories from high school and my coming of age years are tied to this single person. It's so hard to feel like some of the growth that I've had is not in proximity to him. And it kind of leaves your identity in like this weird space of like what growth was done for myself and what growth was done for the success of the relationship or what growth was done to better service him and to better cater to his needs rather than what growth was done for yourself. And I think that that is something that is so difficult to continue to reckon with. End of high school came around and um, I had gotten into University of Toronto and he had gone into NYU. And at the time my sister was also going to NYU and I was so excited because I didn't really feel like we would have to do long distance because there's only a train between Toronto and New York. And I knew I was going to be going down there a bunch to visit my sister anyway. So I was like, oh my god, this will be so great, yada yada. And then he was like, Zoe, I'm not going to NYU. And then, like the stupid bitch I am, I upended all of the plans that I had to move to Toronto and ended up going to University of British Columbia so we could be on the same coast because um, he ended up staying in California for university. So I ended up changing my entire university plan just so that I could be closer to him because I'm stupid. <laughs> I also want to say I don't regret going to UBC. In retrospect, I probably still would have gone to UBC, um, but that, that doesn't mean that like going to UBC for like the primary purpose of like being closer to him wasn't stupid. Like that was objectively stupid. 
I need water. So we did long distance throughout university and it was really fucking bad. Either me or him was threatening to break up like once every like couple months. For those first couple years of university, it was objectively bad and toxic and problematic. But part of me felt like it was just a learning curve. As you're working together and you both care enough to try to make it work, then it's worth trying to make it work. And uh, I don't think I was necessarily wrong. Like the relationship ended up getting a lot better in third and fourth year of university. I feel like in terms of the parts where I could have been a better girlfriend and done better and like had I been the person back then that I am now, I definitely would have just like let him do more and like be less stressed about the consequences of his actions. Just kind of like let him live his own life because I definitely feel like I was like really concerned that certain things that he did would like negatively impact us and was trying to control the situation and by trying to control the situation i was in part trying to control him which is like it's not okay and i totally get that um, for my part that's definitely something that i could have improved upon um I also feel like when I wanted something to happen, instead of just straight up communicating like, I feel like that this is a gap, I would be like, I understand why that gap isn't being filled. And I understand that you're busy and I'm busy and these needs are being met, but I feel like maybe I wish it could be better. Instead of tiptoeing around the topic, I should have just been more straightforward and be like, I feel like this is not, these needs are not being met and we should come up with a solution on how that can be fixed. Paul was not necessarily, not as emotionally intelligent as I was. And therefore when I was trying to communicate things that he maybe necessarily didn't understand and I wasn't communicating it explicitly, then it didn't help his confusion. So that obviously was was a huge problem in terms of communication as well. Cut to COVID, we are not seeing each other at all because I'm stuck in Canada for my nursing program that has to be in person and everyone has gone back home. They're all doing online remote stuff, which is really isolating and sad. And it was great that he was someone to lean on during that time. And we started making plans for him to move up because um, we were both going to be graduating soon and everything was remote anyway. Throughout the entirety of the university, he was really struggling to get internships. I, I honestly didn't know. I don't know enough about the comp sci world to be that great of a judge. So I kind of just took him at face value. So he was really concerned that he wouldn't be able to get a job in Canada. And I told him that, you know, because of COVID, there are lots of crazy factors going on in the world right now so might as well just move up here and try and then if things are remote or they're not remote like we'll figure it out when we get to it since the world is frozen anyway you might as well just be frozen up here for a while so he ended up moving up in august 2021 and i will say that the few months that he was living here were idyllic it was probably the healthiest our relationship had ever been um we weren't arguing we weren't fighting it wasn't it wasn't the way it was in university i really felt strongly that like love conquered all love found a way and now we can start like looking really far into the future in terms of like getting married and i really thought that at the end of this year i was going to be engaged um which like in retrospect is yikes <laughs> oh my god this is where it gets messy anyway he was here in canada on vacation where he needed to get some type of visa for staying here long term and so i suggested that he transfer his university of washington masters um and try to transfer into ubc and then he could get a student visa to go to ubc instead um 
and then he ended up applying for his master's but then he also applied for undergrad because what he explained he explained it to me in a in a way that was like i want to guarantee that i can stay in canada so that if they do reject my grad school my grad school application then i at least can like just go to undergrad again okay sure whatever one day i come home from work i really want indian food so i go onto his computer to um use uber eats and uh, his computer is open to his email and it says that there's like new mail from ubc and i was like oh my god i bet this is paul's acceptance into the undergrad which is so exciting so i click on it and it says thank you for letting us know that you've um rescinded your application to ubc and so i'm like this is the only way you can stay in Canada. If you can't get a visa, then you have to move back home and have to do long distance again, which I've already established, like, we were not functional as a long distance relationship, so I don't think we should do long distance again. If you have to move, then I think we should break up. And then he tells me the reason he rescinded his application to UBC was because they were requesting his transcript from the University of Washington and he didn't have a transcript from the University of Washington because he was never enrolled in a master's program. And the reason he was never enrolled in a master's program is because he dropped out of his undergrad program in second year. Which mind you, at this point, he had been lying for three and a half, four years about what he was doing with his career, with his professional life, with his education. So for like half of our entire relationship, it was like all a ruse. So me being the fixer, being the person that loves to just like fix and help people and put other people first, I didn't even initially be like, oh, we should break up. I was like, oh my God, so why did this happen? Like, what's your plan? What are we going to do? Yada, yada. And then when I told my sister about it, she was like, so you, you need to break up with this guy. Like, he has zero respect for you. If he, uh, like the gravity of this situation, if he's okay with like concealing that for the amount of time that he did, like that's insane. There is no trust there. We ended up separating, which is just like really unfortunate because again, at the time the relationship was better and healthier than it ever was, but um, obviously it wasn't because <laughs> it was all a lie. That is the story of my breakup. I feel like there are lots of people who feel the same way as me, but it's like when you have all of these hopes for a relationship, even if in your heart you know it's not working, like I should have known that it wasn't working. I shouldn't have even said yes to him in high school because like I didn't feel the way that I think you're supposed to feel in a relationship. It was just kind of, um, but obviously you start growing attachments and the more, the more experiences you have together, like we were nominated for prom court together and we did our first everything together, first kiss, first, first everything. There's like sentimentality and nostalgia and it's so tricky because like I spent so many years trying to make something that obviously was not working, trying to make it work. And I feel like a lot of women are in these roles, mainly because as women, we're, we're taught to be nurturers. We're taught to take on these roles of like being the emotional cushion for men and being a safe space for men to be vulnerable. It's just really, really hard to be that person when like your needs aren't being met. You're taught to be in this role that is not servicing you. So I guess it was a blessing in disguise that he ended up making such a big mistake because had he not, I probably never would have 
broken up with him. Um, I also just wanted to add that one of the most difficult components of this whole relationship falling apart is the feeling that you're a failure or you did something wrong just because like there was so much adversity faced in the front half of the relationship and there were so many obstacles to overcome. It sucks, especially since so many of our friends are mutual, so many of our high school memories and friendships and relationships are all intertwined with one another. It's hard to look back on some of the memories and some of our friends and some of the, re like, the relationships we had in high school and not feel like all of those are tainted in some way. Like, it's hard to not feel like a failure. Um, but that doesn't mean you should stick... I think it was okay to have pride in the relationship, but, like, that doesn't mean that shame necessarily has to come when the relationship is over. Like, in any, if anything, it should really be, like pride in the relationship working and then once it's no longer working pride in servicing yourself so overall um a really interesting experience <laughs> um i would not necessarily recommend it if any of you guys have crazy ex stories please let me know i would be fascinated to hear them um and yeah i there's no real moral of the story it's just kind of like the relationship is over and um i honestly don't bear any ill will towards him i really 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 hope he like sorts himself out and like finds what he's looking for and so that he can put himself first but that's everything <laughs> i will um i don't really know what i'm gonna be doing for my next video but i'm gonna be going on vacation soon which is so exciting um, I'm going to Disney World with some TikTok friends and then I'm going to be spending some time in New York with my sister and then I'm going to be going to SF for a little while. So I will obviously take you guys along with me, but overall I think these like little video snippet things are super therapeutic for me and I hope that other people are interested and like, I don't know, I, I hope other people are enjoying it as much as I am talking about it. So um, yeah, again, I hope we can all sort ourselves out together. Um, yeah, I will see you again.